All right, we're back. One sec. A recent Ganja data, Ganja data study, I guess, was released by the National Council on Drug Abuse. And here to, pardon the pun, clear the air, political analyst Richard Dickey Crawford and Chief Executive Officer of the Dispute Resolution Foundation, Mr. Paul Hines. Gentlemen, good morning. Thank you for being here. Thank um, you. This interview comes against the background of what is being called a standoff between the Ministry of Health um, and a lobbyist of the Cannabis Licensing Authority, CLA, um, Delano, CLA Director Delano Sivright, who we're hoping would have been here this morning. Um, I'm putting forward what Delano has suggested in a letter to the editor, edit, editor written to the Gleaner to say that Dr. Winston Delahaye, that's our CMO, has in the past presented um, controversial and dubious reports inimical to the use of ganja. Actually, I'm trying to figure out if this is Delano's co um, comments or another young lady who wrote to the Gleaner. Let me just make sure to clear that. Minister's comments come against the background of criticism from Sivright and the letter writer to the Gleaner. So this is not Sivright, this is a letter writer to the Gleaner yeah. who was questioning um, the CMO's findings, the NCDA's findings on ganja as being increasingly harmful to young people. Um, Dickie, what is your stance? Do you support the minister or do you support what Delano is saying? And what is the standoff, really? What okay. comprises what's going on? It seems to me, well, let's probably make a correction. There was an excellent letter that came in on the subject, but Delano also is questioning. Yes, but the direct quote, I wanted to make sure to attribute yes, it to yes. the right the, person. But he's yes. also questioning the validity of the findings. Um, I think we, we are caught, first of all, quickly in a situation where the National Council on Drug Abuse has a history, and its mandate is, of course, to have a drug-free Jamaica, and it works with the United States Embassy, government, and other organizations in this realm. So we can understand that leaning that they have developed over a number of years. Um, I agree with Delana's position, because even before this view of a 50% increase in the use of ganja by school children... Which was what the study found? Right? Yes, that's the one 50%. that has caused the, the one that has caused the land to speak out. Just shortly before that, there was another study or another part of the study that they did, which tended to want to link the rise in accidental driving and accidents in Jamaica to the use of ganja, and we found that that was grossly unfair as well, and we took issue with that. What is the basis of you taking issue with both the 50% the, the increase findings as well as the one you just mentioned? Well, the, on what the, basis do okay, you... Okay, on, on the first issue, it is very clear. When you look at a copy of the study, it is a contradiction to the headline and the message that they're trying to send to Jamaica. And the very newspaper editor or the person who wrote the piece agreed with us that it really is a problem. Subsequently, we went and had a meeting with the National Council on Drug Abuse mm -hmm. to see how we can work together because that was an objective um, in, the, in the whole issue of the decriminalization of ganja, <coughs> that the public, the stakeholders, National Council on Drug Abuse, we would all work together to develop a comprehensive education and information plan. But the, the, the NCDA has gone on on its own and published these issues. Now, what gives currency to, to Delano's position is that the vice chairman, Dr. Wendell Abel, of the National Council of Drug Abuse, agrees with him and, and suggests that they, are, they have no indication, no data to support such a statement. So wouldn't it, okay, this is interesting. We need to add also that um, Sir Dickey is the VP of the Ganja Growers and Producers Association, so we need to make that clear. Mm -hmm. um, Wilson, I guess that's the young lady who wrote the letter, she agreed that with Sivright that the information is very suspicious, stating that Dr. Delahaye plays or has played a leadership role at the NCDA who may very well rely on negative data to garner more support for their efforts. That's a very serious claim, Sir Dickey, that is being made here. But the history shows it. That's been the history of the National Council on Drug Abuse. So you're questioning the objectivity of the association based on Dr. Delahaye's involvement? Well, I, the, the, I think the way they intend to, or how they're influenced <coughs> to express their interests, yes, is, is, is biased against the industry. And it would be with a view to what? Well, I, th I think it's the, they were formulated out of this anti-drug war. That's, 
um, raging still in the United States of America. In the United States of America, we have the two different opinions. The federal government, some of them, still opposing mm -hmm. this thing. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the states and the advocates and the businessmen and businesswomen <coughs> in America going straight ahead regardless. Now, that's a bigger state, as we say, a bigger situation, and they have many laws, and they use those laws, and they are not listening to the anti-drug hysteria of the, of, 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 of the government. All right. So, Paul, how do you... How do you come in? It seems you have some work to do, Mr. Yes. Hines. No, I'm fine with it. <laughs> Except that I have a little bit of challenge with hearing that there's a disagreement about the data and we're choosing to identify a person. I have a problem with that because data is data. Is either you have a problem with the data because it's flawed. It is not collected properly. There's a problem with the methodology. And therefore, it takes me to the point that perhaps inside the NCD there is need for mediation because, and I'll tell you why, it seems hmm. a bit of a challenge to understand why an organization with its history would have so many disputes about data around a important issue to all of Jamaica. So perhaps I need to get their act together first before they make a public statement. Now, I don't agree with Dickie that Delano has a valid statement. I don't know whether Delano was speaking about methodology because he read the study and disagreed how it was done. But if he's disagreeing with the data, then he needs to show contrary data to say this data is not... This is if, if Dickie right. disagrees. Right, but I'm saying an opinion about data is one thing. Data is data. Is that the data is wrong? Right? It, is, it is correct, but you can't challenge it on the basis that because of history, and I hear Dickie's point... Unless that he's trying to suggest that... The interpretation the data of data has been... It's not the data itself. It's how you well, can publish the, the data. The collection has been skewed. Is, yeah, is well, a serious claim you're making? It's a, it's a very serious claim. Because, claim, yeah. you know, if, if the data is, is wrong, it's one thing. But if you're suggesting that by somebody's leading, they have manipulated right, which is what I'm the hearing. data to show something, then that's a very, very... Not the data itself, you know. Because in the case that I mentioned earlier about the increase in road accidents in Jamaica. The data in that story that we saw and examined <coughs> said one thing. The headline that capsulated What did the data say? That it is more than likely, they're trying to link the fact that because ganja has been decriminalized and perhaps more males in particular are using it, that could be the cause of And the issue you have with that data accidents. is what? The, in, the, the issue you have with that, that claim or that inference is what? Well, in that case, the data is totally different from the interpretation and the publication and the cover that, that reports on that data. So you have to be careful there, you know. Mm. That's the point I'm making. You're not quarreling necessarily with the data. As you said, data is data. Right. But if you report the data, you're getting into what they call alternate facts now, and this is where <laughs> they... Other thing, if you report the data, if you report the data incorrectly, you, you, you have an obligation, I think, to report it accurately, and you have an obligation. So is your issue with the data, Dickie, or is your issue with the headline? The interpretation drawn? in that case. Okay. In the second case, right, uh, we have from within the same organization. I get that part. A vice chairman, right. Repudiating. So different voices within one organization. Within I get one that. organization. What do you say, Dickie, to the folks who would hear you and say, um, you're essentially speaking to a matter of agenda? And they would say that as the VP of the Gandra Growers and Producers Association and Delano in his um, capacity as the CLA director, you're pushing your own agenda. So it suits you to disagree or to say the data is skewed or anything that would make <laughs> yeah, cannabis yeah. look the history, better. The history, it's better for you. The history refutes that. Um, 30 years ago, as younger people, we were advocating for the decriminalization and legalization of ganja. That led to the Chevans report. It is clear in that Chevans report, which is the thing that went to Parliament long ago to try to influence the outcome of the industry. It's clearly stated there, no one under 18 years of age should deal with smoking ganja. Definitely not. So it's not a matter that we are defending an interest. We have the same position. Everybody has, every advocate has that same position. What 
also happens um, why we have to argue like this and why I particularly argue like this. Let's look at something. Do you know that 30 years ago, to the best of my knowledge, we were the only country in the world that produced a satisfactory medical substance from ganja? Dr. Lockhart and Manly West produced canasol and asthma I know, my dad 30 used years very, ago. Yes. And it very has familiar. not taken off as it should because the Federal Drug Administration in the United States never did want to give them the copyright and the patent. So we have this history of a fight over the years against I hear you industry. talking about the medicinal value, which I don't think anybody can dispute. Do you dispute any of the findings? Let's go back to the data. Are you mm -hmm. concerned about any of the issues that have been raised by the research? Do you think there may be seeds of, pardon the pun, seeds of truth um, or, or a potential cause for concern in any of the issues identified by the NCDA in that report? Well, there is, there is cause for concern. Or, or you sh we should be aware of the fact, one, that children certainly should not use it. Safety is sense. Right. Not, nor do I believe they should be taking cocaine, nor should they be drinking alcohol. 75% of this country, from the NCDA's own report, shows that 75% of us drink alcohol, 28% have used ganja. I didn't even know it was such a low use of ganja. In I the country, I thought it was higher than I that. I wonder if that's right. If you're disputing data and stuff, no, we may need <laughs> to look at it. Don't put me in a position we're disputing everything. Yeah. But, um, and, and for the reason that the properties of, of, of the plant has different impact on different people and they respond accordingly. Right. So one should always right. be careful. Closing words, Paul, we have to go yeah, on this I, thing I, I think that we have to look at the public ed about the decriminalization or the restrictive use of up to two ounces. And I think that has not been sufficient. So perhaps that is probably what is it that the data is showing that there's yeah. need for more public ed Quite for youngsters so. to stay away from Quite it. Quite so. And Gosh. it should be more on the whole medicinal use. So much to talk much about. Much more work to be Thank done. Thank you we very much, gentlemen. This, yeah. this, this, this debate is going to be um, interesting mm -hmm. when Sir Paul gets involved. Um, political analyst Richard Dickey Crawford and Chief Executive Officer of the Dispute Resolution Foundation, Paul Hines. Rally back.